Hey folks, so I want to help you a little bit with homework. I know this is one of those super confusing problems um, from section 3.1 where you're working with base numbers that are not base 10. So let's first look at A. So we're trying to find the numeral preceding 100 base 8 is the way you would read that. Now, when I do this problem, it helps a whole lot for me to know what 100 base 8 is in base 10. And this, if, if for no other reason, this is to check your work. So let's just review what 100 base 8 actually means. And I got to be careful. Probably it even shouldn't say 100 because that's our tendency, right? But that's a base 10 number. I really should say 100 base 8. That's what that is. And by definition, 100 base 8, well, I lost my pen. Stand by a minute. So that's 1, and this is base 8, so this is times 8 to the second power. Why? Let me just keep going. You count the 8s down. So plus 0 times 8 to the first power plus 0 times 8 to the 0 power. Okay, so when you write this out, the one on the left is just units. So that's going to be whatever base you are to the zero. The one, the second from, I uh, said from the left, from the right, y'all. Uh, so the one farthest to the right is whatever base to the zero. The one next to that, which is the middle zero in this case, is eight to the first. And then this one, because it's base eight, will be eight to the second. So think about it, one less exponent to the digit that you're at. If you're in the third from the right, that's going to be to the second position. We'll revisit that on question B. So this number in base 10, which by the way is not what it asks, right? This is just so we can talk about this. This will be 1 times 64, because 8 squared is 64, plus 0 times 8, plus zero times, again, this is really the ones place out here. So this is just the number 64. It's a fancy way of writing 64. In other words, it is the number 64 in base 10, but it is 100 in base 8. Now, they want the number preceding this. Now, we, we know in base 10, the number preceding 64 is 63. But I don't suggest trying to build 63, okay? That it, you can do it, but it gets a little bit confusing. What we do know is we need to subtract 1 from this number. That's what preceding means. So let's think about this a different way. Right now, we have 100 base 8. And again, I, I cannot stop myself. 100 base 8. It gets a little old writing this little 8 out here every time. We're going to subtract 1. Now, 1 in base 10 and the number 1 in base 8 is written exactly the same way. So this 1 down here really is base 8, but it does mean just 1. And again, preceding, you're always going to subtract 1. Now, you see our big problem here. I cannot subtract 1 from a 0. So I'm going to have to borrow. I'm going to have to borrow right here from this zero, but I don't have what I need there either. So I'm going to have to scoot over here and borrow this one. Okay, now remember what this one means. It is one eight to the squared power. So I'm going to knock that down to zero because that's my only choice. Now I'm going into the eight to the first column. And that means I have 8, 8 to the first right now. Does that make sense? Well, remember what 8 squared meant. Okay, that's 8 times 8. This is also 8 times 8. So I'm okay to knock that down to 0. And this is 8 times 8. So this would be an 8 right here, but that doesn't really make any sense, right? Because we're in base 8. So I don't even know if I'm teaching this the best method to to make sense but it's the only way that it makes sense to me okay so i knock this down okay that is really here and i'm going to borrow just eight okay so that's going to make that eight over there so this idea turns into an eight and i took 
Again, one of these eights away, so now that is seven. Super duper confusing, right? Then you have eight minus one is seven. Seven minus zero is seven. And then this is just zero. So the number preceding one zero zero base eight is zero seven seven. But now if you convert that, just check your work, convert that and see if that's 63. So this would be zero times eight to the second plus seven times eight to the first plus seven times eight to the zero power. We just need to check, see if that's 63. So that's zero plus 56 plus, remember that's a one right there. That's really equivalent to one. So 56 plus seven is 63. It checked out. Okay, so this is the preceding number. Okay, what about the post number, the number after that, or succeeding? Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to add one to this 100 zero, zero base eight. So I'm going to come over here and do that in green. So I've got 100 zero, zero base eight again. And I'm just going to add one to that. Now, is it okay to add zero and one? Is that still a base eight number? Yes, because all ba the base eight numbers are just zero through seven. So zero plus one really is one. Zero plus nothing here is zero, and one plus nothing here is one. So this is the succeeding number. But again, if you're not confident in that, let's go back to purple and just check it. We know the number after 64, remember that's our 100 zero, zero base 8 converted to base 10 numbers, is going to be 65. So this should equal 65. Let's check it. So I have 1 times 8 to the second plus 0 is my second, so times 8 to the first plus 1 times 8 to the 0. Okay, well, 8 to the second, 64 times 1 is 64, plus 0. 8 to the 0 is 1, so that's 64 plus 1 is 65. So notice that checks out. So the preceding number is 077. The succeeding number is 101. I know this is tough. I know it is. Um, the good news is I left off multiplication and division because I thought that that just felt really close to a nightmare. If you think this is bad, multiplication and division is worse. So that's why we're only adding and subtracting these, these weird base problems. So let's try B. Let's go, let's go ahead and do B as well. I'm going to switch screens on you. There we go. So wipe all that out and let's work with problem B. Now we're working with base two. So this is a one. Let's get that pen working again. One, zero, 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 zero. I gotta make sure I got the right amount of zeros. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. There we go. Now remember how we do this. This one on the right is two to the zero, two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth. So this is one times two to the fourth. This is changing it to base 10. Zero times two to the third. Zero times two to the second. Zero times two to the first. Then finally, 0 times 2 to the 0. Now we know 2 to the 4th is 16. So this is 1 times 16 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. In other words, this number in base 10 is just 16. Now I circled that like that's the answer. It's not. Okay? Now remember, what we're really trying to do is find the number before this, which we know is 15. Am I right? So the preceding number why did I put a dash in that? I have no idea. Is 17. But that's base 10. So we're only using this to check ourselves. And if you're confident about what you're doing, you don't have to even check yourself. But I never feel confident with these, so I always check my work in base 10. So all I'm trying to do is find the number before one, zero, 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 again, base two. Now remember in base two, there's only two digits, a zero and a one, nothing else. So I'm sub trying to subtract one from here. Now this is not going to be easy to do. Remember this one right here 
is 1 times 2 to the 4th. If I wrote that out, that's 1 times 2 to the 4th. I've got to borrow, borrow, right? All these zeros, I've got to go all the way over here, okay? And that's 1 times 2 to the 4th. Now that's 2 times 2 to the 3rd. I'm just rewriting what this is in the thirds column. Now this is knocked down to 0. But I'm going to borrow one of these 2 times 2 to the thirds. Okay, I'm going to make it a 1. Now it's a 1 times 2 to the third. In other words, this is a 1 now. And I'm going to scoot that one over. Okay, and I'm going to make that 2 times 2 squared. And I'm also going to make it where you can read it. I can't even read my own writing. That's 2 times 2 squared. I'm going to borrow one of those. That 2 goes down to a 1. And now I'm going to make this one a 2 times 2 to the first power. I got to borrow one of those. That's going to make that a 1. And now this is 2 times 2 to the 0, which is really just a 2. Now that's a 2. And I can subtract. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus nothing underneath is a 1. That's a 1. That's a 1. And this is a 0. Now, the thing is, when we type in our answer, because there's a 0 on the left side, you don't have to include that one. Your answer will just be 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, I told you about my confidence rating, right? I don't feel super, super awesome about these. So I know my answer is supposed to be 17. I'm going to erase just a little bit because I'm running out of space. And I'm just going to check to see if this 1, 1, 1, 1 is right. Okay. I even include the 0 if you want it when you check it. That's really 0 times 2 to the 4th plus 1 times 2 to the 3rd plus 1 times 2 to the 2nd, plus 1 times 2 to the 1st, plus 1 times 2 to the 0. Let's all add all that up. So this is 0, 2 to the 3rd is 8, so that's 8 plus 2 squared is 4, so 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 to the 1st is 2, 12 plus 2 is 14, plus 2 to the 0 is 1 times 1, that's 15. Is that what we're expecting for our preceding number? It sure is. So this is your preceding number, okay? Now what about your succeeding number? I'm going to go to the top of the screen here, right close to our problem, and rewrite one, our original base 2 number. There it is. And I want to add one because that's what succeeding means. Now 0 plus 1 in base 2 is 1. The, num the digit 1 is allowed. 0 plus nothing below it, nothing below it, nothing below it, and there's a 1. This is your succeeding number. Now we should check it. Okay, what does that really mean? Again, this is 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th. So I have 1 times 2 to the 4th plus 0 times 2 to the 3rd plus 0 times 2 squared plus 0 times 2 to the 1st plus 0 times 2 to the 0. All these are 0 in the back, so there's nothing there. 1 times 2. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Did I do that right? No, that's supposed to be a 1. That's not a 0. Okay, so that's a 1 down there. What's 1 times 2 to the 4th? That's 16 plus 1 is 17. Is that the succeeding number? Yes, the, the digit after 16 is 17, so we've done this right. So... This is my, I keep saying post, but my succeeding number, the second question, and this is my preceding number. These take a long time. They're confusing. On the test, please be able to convert from these numbers to base 10 and base 10 back to these numbers. Okay, that's what I need you to be able to do on the test. This is good exercise, though. It's also headache-inducing. I'm with you. I get it. I understand. Okay, so here we go. Last problem. 202 base 3. Okay, so first of all, we don't have to do this, but let's just figure out what 202 base 3 actually is in base 10. Okay, so this is going to be 2 times, this is base 3, so this is going to be 3 to what power? What's what position it's in? This is 3 to the 0, 
The middle zero is three to the first. This two is three to the second power. Okay, plus there's a zero in the second position. That's times three to the first. Plus there's a two in the third position, which is three to the zero. And in detail, that's two, three squared is nine. Plus zero, three to the first is three. Plus two, three to the zero is one. This is just our original number, base 10. This is 18 plus two is 20. That's what this number is equal to. It went too high, that's 20. Now we know the number preceding that is 19, right? But I've been doing this the way I'm supposed to, which is I take my 202, two, which is base 3, a number preceding, we're going to subtract 1 from that. Now, preceding on this problem is actually easier because we can do 2 subtract 1. We don't have to borrow. 2 subtract 1 is 1. 0 subtract nothing is 0. 2 subtract nothing is 2. Okay. So that is my preceding number. You want to check it? Of course you do. You want to make sure you get these things right. So this 2 is in the 3 to the second position. So that's 2 times 3 to the second. Plus there's a 0 in the 3 to the first position. Plus there's a 1 in my 3 to the 0 position. Now if I write that in, out in detail, that's 2 times 9 plus 0 times 3 plus 1 times 1, and I wrote an extra set of parentheses I didn't want to put there. Now, what is that number? I hope it's 19, right? Because our base 10 number was 20, so the preceding number should be 19, but let's find out. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 0 is still 18, plus 1 is 19. Look, it checks out. Now, the succeeding number, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to take my 202, my original base 3 number and add 1 to it. Now here's my problem. When I do 2 plus 1, I get 3. Well, 3 is not a digit in base 10. I can't do that, right? So this is 3, really. Think about that. That's a 3 right there. But I need to carry a 1 to represent that 3. And this is really a zero, because anything three or bigger has to carry at least a three. So this is like one times three to the first. That's what's really there when you put a one in that column. So two plus one is three, which is three zero. So, uh, I mean, one zero, I'm sorry. There's my one, okay, that I carried over. So I really have to have not a three right here. I have to have a zero right here because anything three or bigger I'm going to have to carry some stuff. So two plus one is the number three in base ten which is a one zero. Okay now one plus zero is one. I don't have to carry anything because one is a base three digit and then this two added to nothing is two. So this is our succeeding number. Okay but we always want to check it because that's just what we do, right? So I have my first to the left is 2 times 3 to the second power. Plus, I have a 1 here, so that's 1 times 3 to the first power. Plus, I have a 0 in my, like my 1's position, 0 times 3 to the 0 power. If I write that out in detail, that's 2 times 9 plus 1 times 3, plus 0 times 1. Remember, 3 to the 0 is just 1. Okay, that's 18 plus 3 is 21. Is that what we expected? Yes, because in base 10, our original number was 20. The number that succeeds 20 is 21, so that checks out. What do you think? I know these are a bugger, but they really get your brain thinking. Not only that, it gives you this enormous appreciation for the base 10 system. I mean, enormous. I hope this helps you out. Have a great day.